What's up YouTube? It's the Action Figure Grader coming back to you with another market update. Big surprise. This time for vintage Kenner Star Wars items. And we've got everything from 12 backs all the way through the droids and Ewoks lines. And I've got some thoughts as we go through some of these on where it makes sense to maybe look at buying some that are ungraded. And if you're into graded mint on card figures, grade them yourself because the price disparity just doesn't make sense sometimes. Uh, and some of the prices were really surprising. Some of them were not. Some of them were really sneaky good deals uh, that were available on eBay that were either mislabeled or just people missed them. So let's go ahead and dig in. The first one we're going to start off with, which I thought was a great deal, was a CAS 80 plus grade Ben Kenobi 12 back A. So one of the earliest card backs for uh, for Ben Kenobi, it did have a price sticker, big K price sticker, 197. Good investment, good investment on that one. Uh, it was a punched example, uh, 12 back a 80, 85, 90 were the sub scores of white haired Ben Kenobi, 80 plus overall, and it sold for 1650. 1650 is a good deal for a 12 back a. That's the cheapest I've seen for one of those in a long time, and a, a really good value, I think, given. Uh, given what it is. I mean, it's an early card back for Ben Kenobi. Uh, next up, on the other end of the spectrum, was an expensive one. This was a 12-back B, small head Han Solo. Punched example, no price sticker, but it was an AFA 85, straight 85s for the subscores. And we all know how people feel about straight 85s for some of these early card backs. They go for big money. It was listed for $8,000, which seems ridiculous. Uh, and the final winning best offer was $6,000. So who am I to judge on how people spend their money? $6,000 to whoever bought this, uh, it may be chump change to them. I don't know. It's certainly nothing that I'm ever going to buy. So I'm not in any way possible can judge the value of this thing because this is well outside the norm of anything I would buy. And most of us, I would, I think would agree with that, that we're not buying $6,000 mint on card Star Wars figures. So you know, if, if you got the money, go for it, man, because it's it's not going to be an easy find on eBay to get a straight 85s 12-back B Han Solo. But $6,000 was the winning price on that. Uh, next up was an ungraded Sand People. This one was a 21-back offerless. And it did. It looked like it had some light yellowing to the blister, as you can see at the very top of the blister there. It's either shadows, but I think more likely it's it's just very, very light yellowing. No stains on the cape on that one. Unpunched example. And no price sticker. So really pretty. 536 took that home. I think, you know, if this one had not been slightly yellowed on the blister, this would have probably approached a thousand bucks pretty easily. Maybe not. I don't know. At least eight hundred dollars, I can tell you that. But I think because of the yellowing there, it probably held the price back just a little bit. Uh next up was a uh 30, it's is labeled a 32 back, but I think this one was really a 21 back. A 20, 20 back, excuse me, 20, 20 back Boba Fett offer, uh, Greedo. And uh, this one was a punched example with a price sticker in the upper right, but overall very clean. Uh, blister looked great. It looked to be clear to me, uh, probably about an 80 grade. And that one sold for 521. I thought that was a pretty good value on that as well. Uh, next up, this is one where at, at the beginning of this video, I mentioned where. It was mislabeled, and this is the case on this one. This is a very, very tough to find 31 back IG88 uh, debut card. It was labeled as the 32 back, which is not the debut card. The debut card is the 30, uh, the, the 31 back, and as you can see there, Yoda is not in the upper left hand corner. So this is in fact the debut card for IG88. And uh, I, I don't remember one being on eBay in a, quite a while. It was a clear blister, uh, and you know, it did have a price sticker. It was punched, but that's why it sold for six seventy six. At first blush, you're like six seventy six for a thirty two back. That seems really hot. Well, normally I would agree with you, but it is the thirty one back debut card, and in general, uh, they do command a pretty big premium because they're not easy to find. They're not as hard to find as like a thirty one back Bosk. I mean, those are like, you know, less than ten I know of. Uh, but this this thirty one back IG eighty eight was very desirable, and it does seem like at least a couple of people knew what it was. But still, six seventy six for that I think was a pretty good value. Uh, if this had been unpunched with no price ticker, I would have been shocked if it hadn't sold for closer to a thousand bucks. But uh, that was the debut card; it was just mislabeled. Okay, now we're gonna dig into the thirty two back for Yoda, and I do think that there is an argument to be made that. If you're going to get a 32-back debut card for Yoda, 
I would go ahead and look for ones that are ungraded because they're very plentiful. We've talked about this on the channel in the past. It's one of the most produced, if not the most produced, Empire Strikes Back card back, the 32B Yoda on the U.S. card. This one sold for $321. It did have some edge wear by the hang tab. It did have a price sticker. The blister looked pretty good. Maybe one little light ding on the stem there at the bottom. Uh, but it sold for $321. Pretty good value there, in my opinion. Now, you compare that to an AFA 80 Plus that sold, I, I believe, in my last Mint on Card video, that 80 Plus sold for 860 somewhere in that ballpark. And then this one just sold as well. This one was an AFA 80 32 back B Yoda. That one sold for $1,300. So I can't make heads or tails of why there's such a massive price disparity. Admittedly, this one was an unpunched example, AFA 80. But I would argue that this one has an outside chance at an 80 grade, yeah, even though it was a punched example with a price sticker versus an unpunched example with no price sticker. But there's no reason that there should be that big of a disparity in the price, in my opinion. $321 versus $1,300. So we're talking a $1,000 delta on that. So uh, to me, if, if you're out there looking for one, look for an ungraded Yoda and grade it yourself with CAS, UKG, or AFA. And I think you can have some quote unquote, built in equity with the item versus, you know, paying up for one that's already been graded. Now, if you got the money and you don't particularly care, then go for it. I'm not trying to, to tell people what to do with their money, but if you're on a budget and you, you don't want to spend $1,300, then go for an ungraded example. And I would argue that there's no reason that there, there should be that big of a price difference. Uh, next up was an FX7, <clears throat> 32 back. Uh, excuse me, this one was the 31 back as well. So this is another one that was mislabeled, uh, just like the IG-88. This is the debut card, I believe, for uh, for FX7. That one sold for $260.99. Can't tell you why this one sold so cheap. Uh, to me, this one was a, a pretty nice example. It did have maybe some light issues by the stem again. But, uh, you know, for a, a debut FX7, uh, that's a bargain of a deal. Uh, $260.99 plus $14 shipping. So... Uh, you know, again, you know, just really look at, don't always trust, don't always trust the description, the, the item description, because sometimes they can be wrong. And I think that's the case here. This one, I believe is the 31 back debut card, not the 32 back, which is, you know, one iteration later in terms of card backs. Uh, next up was a, uh, this one was a 41 back Lobot. So this one was labeled a 32 back, but this one was a 41 back. Uh, Lobot. It was a, you know, it looked to be a, a crystal clear blister again, unpunched with a price sticker, two twenty seven fifty on that one. So this one fell underneath the radar as well. Uh, I think that's worth a lot more than that personally. Uh, pretty good value there. Probably worth three fifty to four hundred in my opinion. Uh, next up, this one was an incredible item that I had in a what to buy video maybe three four weeks ago. And this one is a 47 back debut card for the Thai Pilot, but this was a quality control sample. So as you can see, it's got a big sticker that says uh, quality control sample approval signed off by a packaging engineer with Kenner. And uh, so pretty rare item. And it was AFA 75 quality control sign off sticker, 80, 75, 85 yellowed. But, uh, you know, this this is a, a very, very rare item. Verified to have originated from an ex Kenner employee. Sticker reads QC sample approval 5482. So pretty cool. Pretty cool to see a, a quality control sample. That one sold for $3,500. It was on eBay for quite a while and it did finally sell at $3,500. Uh, next up was a, a factory sealed C3PO collector case, action figure carrying case. And it was totally sealed in really great shape overall. And that one sold in an auction for $270 plus $17 shipping, worth every penny, in my opinion. This is probably about an 80 grade condition. So uh, these had a you know the shrink wrap around the actual uh, carrying case, along with a cardboard insert that went around it. And it did have a couple of minor spider veins on it, but I would say this is probably a 75 plus or an 80 grade pretty easily. And $270 plus $16 shipping, good value on that. Uh, here's another one that fell underneath the radar that uh, I think that people missed. And that's a 77 back punched example of Yoda. But this one was the made in Mexico variation. So as you can see in the lower left hand corner on the back, it says made in Mexico. So this is the Lily Letty Yoda, Regresso Lily Letty. Uh, now it did have a, a, a pretty big crease on it uh, on both corners on the on the back. 
but and on the top as well. So it, it was by no means mint. I'm not trying to say it was mint. But to get a Lily Letty mint on card made for the U.S. market for $530 in an auction, I thought that was a bargain of a deal. I would argue that if you took this, even in the current condition, send it to AFA, get your AFA 70 or 75, whatever they give it, uh, it would probably sell for closer to a thousand dollars. I'm just, I'm just being honest with you. It's, it's a, it's a tougher one to find. Uh, there's, there's a bunch of different characters that were made for the U.S. market uh, by the Lily Letty factory, but I would say that Yoda is probably the most desirable, and uh, that was a bargain. And I did know it was a, a, a made in Mexico when I saw it. I would love to have had it, but <clears throat> again. I, I can't buy it all. I can't buy it all. You got to pick and choose your battles. And I, I just didn't have the money for it. But that one was a really good deal. If you happen to buy this, congrats, because you got a steal of a deal, in my opinion, for that one. Uh, next up is a very, very tough to find Return of the Jedi card back for Princess Leia Organa. This is the 77 back A. And uh, it, any Princess Leia, first 12, on the Return of the Jedi card back, you're going to pay big money for. This one was no exception. Very lightly yellowed on this as well. It sold for $2,500. Good value there. Uh, I would argue that this time last year, it would have sold for over $3,000. Several of them did in the Facebook groups. So good value on that one as well. But yeah, if you see a Princess Leia, first 12, on a Return of the Jedi card back, for anything under two grand, uh, you're, you're getting a pretty good value if, if it's in good condition. But this one did sell for $2,500, and it's worth every penny of that, in my opinion. Uh, next up, we've got a Power of the Force Lando. This one sold for $305 in an auction. Pretty good value there. It was unpunched or, or slightly unpunched in pretty good shape. Probably would get an outside chance at an 80 grade. And uh, 305 is a bargain of a deal on that. Uh, this seller, the Fabricator, had a number of different droids card backs. All, almost all the characters here, not all of them, but a lot of them. Uh, this one was George Dusat. That one sold for 19040 A pretty good value there. Very heavily yellowed, but unpunched. But the card was in immaculate condition. Uh, he also had Kia Mall. Uh, again, unpunched on the U.S. Droids card back. That one sold for 21047 Another bargain of a deal, just given how good the card back was. One very, very light spider vein uh, by the proof of purchase on the back. But, uh, you know, give me a break. That's easily an 80 grade. Uh, Kez Ebon was another one he had. This one was punched with two price stickers, but 270 for that was another very good value. A lot of people want Kez Ebon because he has the same blaster that I believe was used for the Luke Stormtrooper. So always tough to find that one loose, complete, with the correct Imperial Blaster. But uh, mint on card, 270 is a bargain. Uh, next up, Foul Jobin is another one, 30180 on that one. That one, again, was unpunched and a beautiful condition card back. But here was the big one. This is the Made in Mexico Tig Fromm. Beautiful condition. It, you know, the, the, the price sticker, KB Toys price sticker was curling, but it was unpunched and in just immaculate condition, easily in 80 grade overall, if not higher. And that one sold for $8.98. That's the cheapest I've seen for a mint on card uh, Tig Fromm in a while. There was another one that sold about four months ago in very similar condition, ungraded, that sold for $11.40. So this one sold for $900. So uh, that price has come down just a little bit, but uh, you know, loose and ungraded, we've documented them. You know, four to five to six hundred dollars very easily, and to get it for nine hundred dollars, mint on card, twenty-one bids on that one, good deal. And then finally, uh, I've got one Star Wars Ewoks figure. That was the Duloc Scout, very much AFA ready, ready as the item description states. It was in immaculate condition and probably would easily get an eighty grade, uh, if not higher. And that one sold for three fifty in a buy it now situation, free shipping. So, <clears throat> anyway, lots of good deals out there. Check the item descriptions versus the photos, and uh, sometimes some of these things slip through the cracks, and you can get some pretty good deals out there. Thanks again for watching, and I'll be back soon.